Hi, welcome to the 88th edition of Buzz Boxing Predictions. Yeah, as I could see from the poor number of people, I mean poor attendance of my last video, it was not really a good idea to, to cover the last weekend, which was really poor. Uh, anyway, uh, this one is a little bit better, anyway. so I hope a little more of you will will click on this video. You bastards! <laughs> uh, yeah, well, first fight is uh, uh, Brandon Rios versus Humberto Soto. Yeah, it's uh, like. Uh, a feel feel out fight like to I think both guys want to know where they are like where how much they got left in them you know so Brandon Rios now is uh, lost he was stopped twice not so long ago by Danny Garcia and then uh, before that Timothy Bradley <clears throat> he is a fighter who, uh, you know, has already aged because of his style of fighting. He is such a ferocious, you know, brawler. And uh, those fighters, of course, never have very long careers. So, uh, but Soto is, has always been more of a boxer who occasionally went to war also but uh, you know he has been a, a really smart fighter which was quite unusual always for a Mexican fighter I mean, <coughs> you know what's funny is what I remember when uh, this I think it was Eli Sekbach he was uh, asking uh, Rios about uh, about various fighters it was a few years ago and when he mentioned Soto, you know, Rios just said, pussy. <laughs> it was not, he didn't have much, you know, uh, respect for Soto because he is not a warrior in his eyes, like not a true Mexican fighter. So, but it remains to be seen. Uh, Soto has now been stopped, uh, hasn't been stopped since 2012 when he was uh when he retired after five rounds of beating against Lucas Matisse so uh, but Rios may be able to do it may I mean it's not it depends how much he got left in him of course and uh, yes so I think uh, poor Soto still got his boxing ability but uh, he's of course 38 he's not the same guy anymore so he hasn't really been the same guy since he lost to Matisse and uh, yeah well I think Rios is definitely the favorite to win and uh, but uh, will it be on points unanimous decision split Split majority or a knockout, technical knockout. That's pretty tough, you know, to say. But uh, Rio C is the one to pick here, definitely. Yeah, okay. Uh, then we, I will just say a little bit about uh, Joe Joyce versus uh, Bermain Stevern. Hmm, yeah, this is a fight that is kind of a step up in class for uh, Joyce, even though Stiverne, you know, he was destroyed uh, in his last fight versus Wilder and in one round, of course, and he hasn't fought since November 2017, so, you know, Joyce is a, a much bigger guy, of course. <laughs> Uh, he's also got the athleticism and uh, I think he will be also able to stop 
Steve Earn. But maybe not in one round, more like five, six rounds, something like that. Maybe seven. So, uh, yeah, Steve Earn is just too old, too heavy, too, you know, just not not what he was when he knocked out Chris Ariola for, for sure. And when he went the distance, the, the first man to go the distance against Deontay Wilder. But uh, yeah, I think he just started too late and uh, he got the big fights too late and he was already past 30 and yeah, well past 30. So that's a pity for him. So I think Joyce will win this one. It's a 10 round fight. I think he should be able to stop Stewart within 10 rounds. <coughs> Yeah, then uh, there's uh, the fight between uh, uh, Anthony Durrell and Avni Yildirim. Hmm. Yeah, Yildirim, as you know, was knocked out by Chris Eubank not so long ago. It was a brutal knockout. And uh, since then, uh, he, he won one fight, an easy fight. And... Uh, you know, I kind of, I, I admit I don't really, haven't seen that much of Yildirim, but uh, I always kind of had a feeling that he was a little bit, he didn't really belong in that super series, just to put it simply. So, uh, yeah, I'm oh, sorry, he didn't want one, win one fight, that was a mistake. One, two, three, five fights. They're all like, you know, easy fights and uh, three of them on points. And the last time he beat the very old, the ancient Lolenga Mok, he even struggled against Mok. And uh, now he's fighting Anthony Durrell, who is only that one loss. And uh, that was a, by a close majority decision to Badu Jack. Yes, and uh, Durrell has a, had a, he most impressively st uh, knocked out Caleb Truex in one round, while uh, De Gale, who I will talk soon, talk about soon, he had to go, he first lost to Truex and then had to go 12 to win, to win against him. So the rally you know, is the, the the true favorite here, of course. I just don't see Yildirim be able to beat him at all. No way. I don't think so. So I mean, <laughs> Eubank really exposed him because uh, getting knocked out by Chris Eubank in three rounds means that really, you really can't be, you know elite level material, no way. So I think uh, he will most likely get stopped by Durrell also. Yeah, very likely. Durrell has definitely has got the punch, enough punching power. So it, it may go, I don't know really, somewhere between the, the Sixth and the tenth round, perhaps most likely. Yeah, fifth and tenth. Okay, and then uh, the big fight, let's say, <laughs> of this weekend is uh, Chris Eubank Jr. versus uh, James DeGale. That's right. Finally, these two big mouths meet. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think it will be a pretty unforgettable fight. And uh, I mean, uh, of course, uh, the Gale is now headed towards you know his uh, his last leg of his career, I guess. And uh, he's not that old, but he's already had his share of you know big fights. 
while Eubank is still rather, you know, rather fresh, even though he has lost a couple times already and convincingly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the game has a slight uh, height advantage and uh, one, e one inch and a uh, reach advantage of one and a half inch. Uh, he is a guy that likes to, you know, he, he is a guy that likes to go to the body and, you know, just, he's a rather aggressive fighter, even, even though he's also a boxer, but uh, he never, uh, I mean, uh, he usually does go for the, the knockout, but... Uh, <laughs> Now he hasn't scored a, a knockout since 2014, I believe, against Marco Antonio Peribon, November 2014. That's right. Uh, but I still think the Gay Lee is a better fighter than Eubank Jr. and uh, Chunky. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think when he lost to Truax, he was just having a bad night because it was obvious he just wasn't at his best. And when he was, he beat Truax in the next fight. So, yeah. He's a guy it's not, who definitely isn't, is not easy to beat. And George Groves did it. It was also a close fight, like like uh, against uh, Truex. While George Rose, he really didn't have that much trouble with Eubank Jr. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, both guys are entertaining to watch, definitely, because they can box and punch both. So, well, enough, enough talk. <laughs> I think that def that the Gale is the uh, one that will win. That's my prediction anyway. But uh, perhaps not by a stoppage, but anyway, uh, he can do it also, why not? But uh, he's got the power, but uh, you know, Eubank's ego has gotten to him like uh, it almost did to his dad, daddy, <laughs> and uh, he's just had, I guess he's been too com confident in his own abilities, and that's what happened against Groves. He was on a good run, and then, you know, he just ran into a guy that he just couldn't push around, and, you know, and then he lost. The same thing happened against Saunders, you know, so every time he's up against a guy that, you know, isn't, uh, you know, weaker or smaller or whatever than him, then he loses against a guy that can't box, but also is aggressive. So the, the game is both. He can box and he's aggressive enough, so... You know, I think that therefore he will win, uh, but most likely on points, as I said. Yeah, so that was all. Thanks for watching, and uh, as always, subscribe if you in like my videos. Thank you, and bye-bye.